Hello, everybody. We are in College Algebra, Math 1314. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at a problem uh, where we deal with polynomial functions. In particular, we're going, to be, we're going to be looking at polynomial functions, finding the zeros for that particular function, as well as looking at the multiplicity for each of the zero. As I go through this problem, I need for you to, I need for all of you to pay attention to the fact that there are few things that the problem tells us and it will give you hints of what you need to do in that particular problem. So let's look at our problem. Let's read the problem. Find the zeros for the polynomial function and give the multiplicity for each zero. After we find the multiplicity and the zeros, of course, we will state whether the graph crosses the x-axis or touches the x-axis and turns around at each of the zeros. Our function is f of x equals x plus one-fifth to the power of 4 times x minus 9 to the power of 3. First and foremost, notice that this particular function is already in a factored form. If the function is not in a factored form, we will need to factor the function or find a way to factor the function to get our zeros. However, since our function is already factored, what we're going to do for step number one, we will take each and every uh, factor and set them equal to zero x plus one-fifth to the power of four equals zero, and x minus nine to the power of three equals zero. Now, attacking each and every equation from now on, looking at the first one, notice how we have a base of x plus one-fifth raised to the power of four. This can be written as x plus one-fifth times x plus one-fifth times x plus one-fifth times another x plus one-fifth equals zero. If we set each and every factor equal to zero now, I hope you realize that we will have x plus one-fifth equals to zero for of these same equations. So we'll take one of them and solve for x. Subtracting one-fifth from both sides. x equals negative one-fifth. So we'll have a zero at x equals negative one-fifth. Now attacking it, next problem, x minus nine to the power of three equals zero. Again, we can rewrite this as x minus nine times x minus nine times x minus nine equals to zero. By the similar fashion, we'll take x minus nine, one of the factors, since all three factors are the same, equal to zero, and x will be a nine. So now we found another zero, x equals nine. Now one thing to point out is notice how x equals negative one-fifth, that root occurred four times. Why? Because we have four of the same exact factors. Not only that, look at the exponent, the power is four. If we look at x minus nine, that factor was written three times, hence the power is three. So not only that we found our zeros, we can now predict the multiplicity by looking at the power of each and every one of those zeros. All right, so step number two. Let's find the multiplicity. For x equals negative one-fifth, for that particular zero, notice how the power is four, hence our multiplicity would equal to four. Now, more, when we talk about multiplicity, there are two forms of multiplicity. And as a side note, let's write the rules for multiplicity. When we look at the multiplicity, we need to consider whether that exponent is even or odd. If the exponent is even, like in our case, our power, that exponent was four. Hence, multiplicity is 4. It's an even multiplicity. Now, when we look at x equals 9, so let's look at the multiplicity for x equals 9. The power in x equals 9 is 3. Hence, our multiplicity would equal to 3. Number 3 is odd. So we have two types of multiplicity, even or odd. When the function has a zero with even multiplicity, the function will touch and turn 
at that particular x-intercept, at that particular zero, at that particular root. Notice how I said x-intercept, root, and zero, they mean the same thing. That's where the function either touches or turns at x-axis or crosses the x-axis. When, when the multiplicity is even, we have touch and turn. That means the function will touch the x-axis at that root, but will never actually cross. It will go back where it came from. It will touch and turn. This particular function has a multiplicity of 4 for x equals negative 1 fifth. So at x equals negative 1 fifth, the function will touch and turn at that particular 0. At x equals 9, the power was 3. Multiplicity is 3. Number 3 is odd. The function will cross the x-axis. At that particular root root, so we'll say touch and cross. So two types of multiplicity, even or odd. If the multiplicity is even, the function will touch and turn at the root on the x-axis. If the multiplicity is odd, the function will cross the x-axis or touch and cross at that root. So hence, Let's go back and read the question. Did we find the zeros? Yes, we did. Have we found the multiplicity? Yes, we did. The multiplicity of x equals negative 1 fifth was 4. The multiplicity of x equals 9 is 3. Have we figured out what happens at each of the roots? Yes, we did. Now let's write it down. At x equals negative 1 fifth, the function will touch and turn. At x equals 9, the function will touch and cross.